thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, my God. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, I praise you, God. I lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Genesis chapter 8, verses 19 through 21. Judges. 
Judges. Yes, judges. What did I say? No, judges. Judges chapter nine, uh, chapter 8, verses 19 through 21. And then in Genesis chapter 30, we're going to read a couple of verses there. Judges chapter nine, uh, chapter 8, verse 19. And he said, they were my brethren, even the sons of my mother, as the Lord liveth. If he have saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Zeb and Zoma said, Rise thou and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zelmuna. All right. Sister Mel, would you go to Genesis chapter 30? <coughs> and read verse 21. And afterwards, she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Okay, continue. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. All right. I also want to go to 1 Timothy. Chapter 1. I know a lot of reading. All Genesis, um, excuse me, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh especially that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to receive, to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. All right. So as you see here, this young man that was underneath the his father when the war had broken out, and then there was an opportunity here for some captured men to take them out, to slay them, for they were taking out countries. This Zeba and Zumona, they were capturing countries and attacking and taking over. And so they had made a run at Israel and tried to um, defeat Israel destroy them, and then Gideon end up slaying them after they were caught. But the young man that was there, that was the heir to the, uh, the king there, he wouldn't slay them. When he asked him to, to slay them, he was afraid because he was a youth. Okay? And so, um, but Gideon was there, and then so he arose, and he slew them. And so his fear caused him not to take a, partake of what was being handed down to him. Um, he looked at 
misused and was afraid to go forward and do what was asked for him to do. And so there's a lot of things that are going on out here in our world right now. And the target for those things are to destroy the youth. That's right. Amen. Anytime that, that you know, Satan wants to move, and you will see in your Bible at different time frames that he makes particularly particular uh, war against offspring. Right. Those that are going to inherit. Because God is God is not a just does things at a certain time. Everything that God does is for a perpetual purpose. Right. Amen. 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 It's, it's building up to the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. God is a forward-looking God. Right, man. Amen. Okay. And so, I know you're standing. I'll have you sit here in just a moment. But as God is doing this, okay, and there's a time frame when the devil pulls his forces together, when he has an idea of what God is trying to do, and he will attack it. Right. And try to stop it before it happens. And so a lot of times there's um, created, he likes to create fear. He likes to create doubt. But each generation has to take its place right. in Amen. order for the kingdom of God to go forward. Amen. Amen. And so um, I've just been watching some things that are going on, and I feel like we need to get in the middle of this battle, and we need to prepare for this particular battle. And there's some young people here today, and I want them to be prepared for this battle. Amen. 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 So you can be seated. I'm going to give some indication here of what they should do because this youth was afraid to take out what was going to come against him. Of course, we know that. Gideon had a rose and he slayed him, but then Gideon ended up being a leader that, that he was afraid some at first, but he overcame his right. fear. That's right. That's right. He overcame his fear yeah. and then he went out and got a mighty battle for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. and so that's what I want to talk about today. And so I hope that you can bear with me. Um, I don't know exactly how all of this is going to come out. I just know what I feel and I just know what the scriptures say. Amen. Amen. To do about it. Right. And so so you preach with me and, and, and ride on my coattail today. Because I want to talk to us about youth without fear. Amen. 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 That's right. We need youth without fear. Yes, yes we do. That's right. They can't be afraid of what's coming on in the earth. Amen. Right. Okay, these two kings that he was afraid to, to kill, Zeba and Zumona, were the two kings who led a vast hope of Midianites who invaded the land of Israel in that particular part of Palestine and over whom Gideon gained a great decisive victory. The name Zumona is translated to shadow or image of idols, okay? Um, forbidden idols, to be exact. And Zeba means continual feast. So they were invaders, territorial conquerors, and men killers. Mm. They love killing men, mm. love killing young men, and taking over nations smaller nations, and they thought that they could run over Israel um, in this particular situation. Right. And so the spirit of these men is rising back up, is wanting to take territory from what would normally be God's people's right. inheritance. Mm -hmm. Right. They're, 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 they're wanting to come after them and Destroy them before they get started. Right. Mm -hmm. As you yeah. see there in, in the Bible, 
um, how Israel was in the same situation. And they had been a blessing, actually, in the nation of Egypt. There, and they were blessed. But when the generations changed and a new king came, who didn't know of all the relationship that had happened between the Israelites and the Egyptians. And so as Egypt prospered and it became a mighty nation, they got paranoid of the progression yes. of Israel, God's people. Right. And so their indication was, if, you know, they're going to outgrow us. Right, right. They're going to now prosper us, and then they're going to join up to our enemies, and then they're, they're going to, if any war come, they're going to get them out of the land, and we won't have them around to use them anymore, and we won't have them around to help us prosper anymore. So instead of having them help us, we just going to enslave them. Yes, that's right. We just going to enslave them. And so, but if we go to enslave them, the first thing we got to do is we got to kill all the male babies. Because we don't want them to rise up to be men that conquer right. and men that have wisdom and men that have ideas and right. men that have vision. Right. You know, we, we want them to build our pleasure cities. Right. right. We want them to be under control of the influences of our world mm -hmm. and influence of um, uh, their minds will be where our minds is at on right. pleasures and treasures right. and Hallelujah, and, and all of, of the different things of this world. And so that spirit comes back and forth several times in, in, in the Bible. And then here in the New Testament church, it's just rising up like crazy. Yes. yes. It's, 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 it, it comes out and it reaches out and it wants to destroy the mental capacity of our youth to have a mind for the spirit of God. It right. wants to quench them so that when they come up, by the time they're 17, 18 years old, they no longer are interested in God except for only as a blesser. Right. Yes. They understand that much. Okay, They, they want to be blessed of the Lord, but they don't want to serve the Lord. Okay, and they, they don't want to conquer for the Lord. Right. They want the conquering to continue being done by their parents. Right. They can call their parents up and get a prayer through, and they can call their parents up and get a blessing and, and get an encouragement, but hallelujah, it's got to fall on their heads, and it's got to fall on their hands because we're always not going to be here forever. That's Every right. generation is going to change, yep. and a new generation, hallelujah, warriors has to be born. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. And so we have to make sure that they understand Hallelujah, how to do battle right. with their enemies because it has become more sophisticated. Yes. Right. That's right. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Everybody, you know, the, the, the devil has done a lot of bold things throughout history, okay? But, but you know, now he's ha hiding in dark places and using um, um, different weapons in order to destroy the youth. It used to be a bold thing where they just tried to slay them straight out. But now, I don't know, of course, he has control over all that. I found out there's, there's so many babies that were um, aborted in the last 20 years. It's just absolutely, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's, it's enough babies to fill the nation. Just, just in the last, you know, maybe the last 30 years or so. It's just crazy. Jesus. And so we're still using that old method, but the best thing to do is corrupt them. Right. Right. Because we can, if we can corrupt them, then we can destroy, they'll destroy themselves. Right. Yes. That's right. That's right. And they won't take up what's rightfully theirs. Yes. yes. And go to battle. We can get the dads to be missing and not praying in the house and not yeah. doing the things they need to do, then they won't have a concept of warfare. Right. They won't right. know what weapons are in their hands. Yes. You know, and they won't know how to stand up to the things that are coming against them. Right. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm coming against that in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 We're going to have the youth of Andrew to understand what battle they're in. Yeah. And we're going to have the youth of this church to understand what battle they're in. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Because they need to be able to defend themselves. They need to be able to see their future. They need to be able to walk in the confidence of a God that has made an inheritance for them. And in the last hour, they're going to be able to see more miracles. They're going to be able to conquer more territory. Hallelujah. This is the last hour. God is pouring his spirit out on all flesh. Hallelujah. They have the help of the Holy Ghost. But the devil wants to keep them disinterested. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. Without confidence. Yes. Because he knows confidence is a part tool to faith. Right. And so he wants to destroy them. You know. And so there are some elements that we can use. Hallelujah. That they need to understand how to use them. So that they can defend themselves against the onslaught. Yes, yes. That is coming against them. Right. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. Mm. One thing about an enemy, you always want to recognize what the enemy is. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 1 says, Now the Spirit speak of expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay, and it goes on talking about forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meetings which God created. Um, that's not so much important. Okay, those are basic things. Hallelujah. And you do have um, the priests were doing that for a while, forbidding people to marry and abstaining from eating meat and all that. Um, those are just some little things. But the important things, okay, is the searing of the consciences, okay, and speaking lies and hypocrisy. And so, um, you're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Mm. Okay. So one of them is seducing spirits. Okay. You know, there is a seducing spirit in this world. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. It's a seducing spirit in this world. It's seducing um, young people and people, period, in two different ways. One of them is in the things that's going on in the earth. Right. Okay, there's a seducing spirit that's trying to get us to buy into everything that the world is doing. Right. Okay, it wants us to um, view it all the time, constantly overrun with things that are seductive, things that will draw us out to right. what's not really important, thinking on sensual matters. Yeah. Almost 24 hours of the day, and then anytime they pick up their phone, you know, they could be talking about sports or they could be talking about politics, but then they'll be flashing people coming by that don't have no clothes on. Right. Come on. Right. Right. You know, and then they're going to flash, you know, every time they're talking about something important, but, you know, the commercials keep rolling around, you know, about wearing this type of clothes and not wearing that. And all the people that's prestigious, they make big stories about. A bunch of women that don't wear no clothes. Right. Come on. Right. So exactly they want to keep their minds there. That vanity is the most important thing. That being physically beautiful is the most important thing that you can be. And if you have that, you can have anything. You can control the world. You can have the most handsome man. You can have positions. You can have everything. Yes. And that's not even so. Right. Hallelujah. Those only a few people that are making a little bit out of those things, but that don't please God. Right. That don't cause, that's not going to cause you to prosper in the kingdom of God. Right. right. For you right. go around and flaunt yourself and show it as much as yourself you can, trying to be attractive. Right. Okay. God's not interested, hallelujah, in people bringing attention to themselves. Yeah. He's interested in people bringing attention to him. Making God step away from all the blessings that He want to put in your life. That's right. 
Not only do they seduce them about what's important and how they're going to prosper, but the other seducing spirit comes with this one, the doctrines of devils. Right. They're watering the church down so bad yep. that the young people in this generation can't even recognize what a church is. Right. Right. Um, right. They got this, you know, charismatic movement, if you want to call it that. I don't know. What else to call it? There's nothing wrong with actually having charisma. That just means you got an appealing personality. Right. Okay, but when it's being used to draw people into places, hallelujah, and then you live a lie in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You draw them with your personality, but you don't say what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Right. You say what thus saith the world. That's right. And you get people interested in what's going on with the things of the world. Then they want to be like these people. Right. And there's never no convictions. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hey, you can't live for God without no convictions. Oh, that's, right. that's right. That's right. That's right. You can't even get started with God without no convictions. Oh, that's right. Hallelujah. It's the convictions that brought you to repentance. Amen. It's the conviction that made you walk in the door in the first place. Amen. It's conviction that caused you to want to change your life. Right. It's conviction is just going to keep you from going back out there. Yeah. The world don't want you to have no convictions. They, right. they want you to come as you are and do what you please and look like you want to look right. and act like you want to act and it's okay. God's going to throw a big blanket over it. Wow. Woo. Come on. Preach. It's a misinterpretation of grace. Yeah. Grace takes you to a place you've never been before. Right. Grace yeah. helps you understand what God wants. Grace that causes you to live in such a manner that so many things in this world don't affect you. Yes. It's not a blanket to cover up everything you do. The grace of God and the knowledge of God is what's to keep you from doing those things that would destroy you. Come on. Yeah. So in order for you to receive grace, hallelujah, there's got to be some gratitude. Come on. Hallelujah. Gratitude comes in obeying the word of God. You gotta obey the word of God before you get the grace. And if you obey it, then you get the grace, then you can have some gratitude. Yeah. And the thankfulness will keep you in the church. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. But these people that preach these sort of things, they're afraid to preach them because they worry about their popularity with people. That's right. Glory yeah. to God. If you got your heart right and you actually love people, they'll, they'll receive it even if you tell them something tough. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I came up only part-time with a father. My father was dead by the time I was 16. And so after I went out and ruined my life and I started turning it back around, I sat back and thinking, why come my father didn't tell me this? Mm. Come on. Oh. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. You said you do what you want to do. Right. Mm. Jesus. Mm. And, uh, I, had, I, had a, I had a relative pastoring me for a while. He never told me not to do none of that stuff. Right. Yes. In fact, he was known to do some of the things that would actually be considered sin. Right. Yes. Amen. Did it on a regular basis in front of us, so we just thought it was okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. But it don't work like that. No. Yes. It don't work like that. That's a seducing spirit. Yes, it is. That's to draw me towards you so that so I can think everything is all right. That's not what the church is for. Right. Right. That's what the, not what the men of God and the women of God are for. Right. That's not what we're supposed to be conveying. Okay? Amen. Okay. And so they speak lies in hypocrisy. Wow. Yes. That's hypocrisy. Yes. When yes. you see hypocrisy don't ain't necessarily always what you say, it's what you don't say. Right. right. Oh my. Amen. Come on. Okay, because when you represent a, a certain thing, like for instance, when I worked for the government and when I was in the military, there was some stuff I better not do after I leave the base. Right. Because I'm making a mockery out of the United States government. That's right. right. If I'm supposed to represent them, I'm supposed to represent them when I'm in uniform. And when I'm outside my uniform, I'm still supposed to carry a standard of a person that got good sense. Yeah. And a person that don't sin, and a person that don't mess with somebody else's wife, and a person that don't hang out in places and get drunk and all this sort of stuff. I'm not supposed to do that stuff because of who I'm representing. How much more are you representing the mighty God? How much more are you supposed to represent? Hallelujah. When you're so 
serving the Almighty God and you're his representative and you carry his name on your shirt. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't what they're preaching nowadays. No. Come on now. You can live any old kind of way and God don't care how you live. He's always looking at your insides. No. That's a lie. That's right. Wow. Amen. That's hypocrisy. Yes, it Amen. is. Yes, it is. That's hypocrisy. That's what, that's what. And, and what they do is they take the Pharisees and they're doing it in reverse. The Pharisees looked the part and they couldn't live the part. That's right. Wow. And then now in the world, they want they don't they don't they don't want you to look the part. Hallelujah. So nobody has no idea what's on the inside. That's right. Oh, wow. That's good. So they just hiding it even even better now. Wow. Right. They're not even hiding behind religion now. That's right. Everybody's religious. Yeah. Everybody going to heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is, you know, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus knew he was Lord for you got here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He's going to be Lord when you leave here. Right. <laughs> he's going to be Lord when you make it to heaven, but he's going to be Lord if you go to hell. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. We so, we can't project that image. No. Come on. No. We can't, we can't project that image. No, 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 no. Jesus. And so what happens after that, then they say having their conscience seared with a hot on. You know, they, they start off with a little bit of these things because these wise and hymers come and tell them, back off of holiness and back off of righteousness and somebody, and don't tell people to stay out of all these different places and because you're controlling them, and then they're not going to want God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they tell them to back off a little few things, and the next thing you know, the hot iron comes and just sears everything. Right? That's true. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Your conscience is no good to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just bore a hole in it. Uh. And just everything just spill out. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing important. There's no staples. You know, there, there, there's, there's, there's nothing to make an example of God. There's no safety nets. No. Right. People don't really realize, hallelujah, you know, when you raise your children, you set rules because you don't want them hurt. That's right. Because you don't want them destroyed. Right. Because you don't want your name tore up. Right. right. That's the same thing that God does. He got standards. I got standards here because I don't want God's name messed up. Oh, yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. I mean, my name means nothing, but, you know, I don't want people to say that Pastor Jamel, Pastor, a bunch of people don't know how to act. Right. Right. Come on. Amen. Don't know how to look. You see, them floozies, they came from the lighthouse. Come on. No, they didn't, because they would have shined on them and they would have got up out of here. Yes. We're we not going to act like that. We're not going to dress like that. We're not going to look like that. Right. We're not going to talk like that. Because we're not representing the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. We got to show the world that there's a God. That's right. We ain't trying to seduce them. We trying to keep them from seducing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It, it, it's, it's six of them, the stuff that's going on. Yes. Hallelujah. It's six of them, some of the stuff that's going on. Right? Jeez. We, we, we was... Trying to find some preaching and some other stuff and to listen to. And the website came up about some preachers and stuff like that. And they opened it up and then they had all these famous people that were preaching in large churches. Yes. And bringing dancers in and bringing actors in and bringing famous little people into the church to have concerts for their youth. Ooh. Genocide. I mean, I end up having to just turn my ear and just listen to it because I couldn't look at it. And he's singing all these songs that have nothing to do with God. That's right. But they're setting this up for their young people to do this so they can show them how much they love them. Oh. 
If they love them, they be protecting them from these things. They be preaching against these things. You mean to tell me you can't figure out how to have a youth service and how to have fun without bringing the world in the middle of it? And then you got to spend the rest of the time trying to preach to the youth how to stay out of the world? That's confusion. Absolutely. That's confusion. Yes. You know, I, I, I'd rather tell you what's right all the time and let you be mad at me until you pray through. Right. Right. That's right. For me to give you, you know, the wrong idea about it, that this is okay and that's okay, yeah. what's the good to come to church? Yeah. You might as well just Google everything. You can figure stuff out on Google. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there ain't no truth in Google. Right. It'll have some stuff, some facts, but it ain't going to be lined up on line and preached up on preached up and hear a little. It ain't going to be from God. That's right. Amen. It's just a tool. Right. It's just a tool for information. But information is no good if it ain't lined up with the purpose. Yeah. Right. Come on. Right. Whew. So we can't we can't convey these type of things. Right. Amen. See, down in verse 11 there in 1 Timothy, there are some things there. I love the book of Timothy, First Timothy. Is that 4.11? No, we're in, I'm still in chapter 1. Because it's going to give a... It's the wrong chapter. It's the wrong chapter. Okay. Read me verse 12. Verse 11. Of, of, of chapter 4. Even so must their wives... Be brave, not slanderers. Uh -uh. You said four. I'm sorry. I said one. You said four. Okay, four and eleven. You said one and eleven. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm in chapter one. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Okay, First Timothy chapter one, verse eleven. That's what she just that's read. What it is. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is which was committed to my trust. Okay. So these I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong chapter. And these things command and teach. That's four. Right? Yep, that's where I want to be at. Okay. Okay. So these things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, Amen. but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit. In faith and in purity. Amen. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Come on. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy, with the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly unto them, that, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. This, this, this is how the youth will become strong. This is how a young person or any person strengthens themselves against the seducing lies and hypocrisies and the false churches of this world Hallelujah, that are giving us the wrong idea how to serve the living God. Amen. The living God is holy. Yes. He has always been holy. Yes. Amen. Okay, he speaks about holiness three times more than he does about love. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Okay, everybody want to preach out the love books. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you got to preach out the holy books before you can get to the love books. Uh -huh. Yeah. Holiness means pure. Yes. Okay. It is pure. Okay. And so who can love better than a holy God? Amen. Okay. God. God loves because he's holy. Yes. Right. You don't love yourself in the holiness. Hallelujah. God loves you because he's holy. Amen. Because his morals are pure. Yes. His desires are pure. Yes. Right. 
He wanted you to be like him. He was created, created man. He wanted a being like himself that would have his own mind. Yes. Amen. But if it's going to be in his likeness and his image, it's got to be holy. Yes. Come on. Yes. Preach. Yes. Praise God. So, you can't actually love appropriately if you're not holy. That's right. Amen. 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 That's true. That's good. Okay, because there's going to be too many human flaws in it. But the holiness of God, through the conviction of the Holy Ghost, will cause you to do things right. It will cause you to love with a pure heart. It will cause you to love even when you're tested, even when something comes against you. It will cause you to sacrifice, hallelujah, to show somebody that you love them. It will cause you to teach them the right way because you love them. Because in the essence of it comes from the purity of holiness. Woo! Amen. Preach. Teach it. Preach it. That's why love is the greatest of all the different gifts of the Spirit. Amen. But notice it being the greatest gift of the Spirit, it emanates from God's holiness. Amen. Yes. Okay, because God is holy. And so he's bringing a people to him that's going to live for him that's yeah. always been holy. Yeah. He's not going to have an unholy bride. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Corrupted with all the things of this world and his mind, not in the things of the kingdom of God or the word of God. Right. But not in any submittance to the word of God. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. good. Praise Those are the God. ones that's going to dance on streets of gold. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because there ain't going to be nothing in the way right. when you get yes. to that final destination. Yes. Hallelujah. But we can't draw people onto a holy God if we're unholy. Amen. 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 Okay. And so we need youth that's going to be strong. Hallelujah. Their holiness. Or we won't be able to draw the young people out of this wicked world right. that wants to destroy the future of the church. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't want to see the church. Hallelujah. And I don't want to see our youth destroyed. I want to see them to prosper in the kingdom of God. Yes. There's great things waiting for them. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. This is the last generation. Hallelujah. Yes. That's going to have the things of the world. I mean, have the things of God shown so plainly. That's why he's pouring the spirit out on all flesh. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. He's not pouring it out on particular flesh. He's pouring it out on all flesh. Right. There's going to be people for every nation and every tongue and every background. Yeah. People that your ancestors were heathens and everything else. Hallelujah. They're all going to be blessed in this last hour. Come on. Hallelujah. And so we want to get part of all of the young people in this place. Yeah. We want to get every nation, every ethnic, how you ever you say that, of every country in this place. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't do that if our youth ain't strong. Hallelujah. Yeah. They can't live it the way it's supposed to be lived. Right. Right. Glory to God. And so we're going to teach them how to strengthen themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So first of all, I say you got to give some attendance to some things. Yeah. Right. One is to read him. Yeah. We got to give attendance to reading. Yeah. We need to be reading the Bible. Right. Amen. Second Timothy chapter three verse fifteen says, "And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus." Right. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable right. for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness. Amen. Okay? Amen. And so you get instruction for the word of God, then you represent the word of God. That's right. Right? Woo. You get instructions from the word of God, and then you go out and you represent the word of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that's what a that's what a, a youth without fear is going to do. Amen. They're not gonna be afraid, hallelujah, to stand up for God and his ways. Right. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so we, we want the youth to be strong. So they got to read the word of God. Right. Hallelujah. You need to put the phone away and pick up the Bible. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. The best way to do that is put the phone far away somewhere and go somewhere else and read the Bible. Because the minute you start reading, one of the devil's servants is going to text you. They're going to send you a video. Yeah. They're going to they call you up on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. 
And so you just need to have, put an automatic answer on there, okay? When, when it comes on Facebook, I'll say, sorry, I'm, my face is in the book. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. I know people that used to call me and say, man, I've been sending you a message on Facebook. What would you do that for? I don't have a Facebook page. <laughs> Glory to God. I right, keep my faith in this book. That's all the information I need. Well, you got something important to tell me, give me a phone call. I ain't going down the internet looking to see and got to look at everybody else mess at the same time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. You know, keep your faith in the book. Yes. That's where the good information is at. That's right. That's where right. salvation is at. That's yes. where prosperity is at. That's, That's where good health is at. That's where a, a, a clean mind is at. Yeah, yeah. I'm not ignorant of what Sally Bell did in school. Come on. Yes. Glory to God. We, 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 we want to live a consecrated life. Yes. We want to uh, give attendance to reading. Right. We want to give... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read some more of that. That is feeling too good. Come on. Come on. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 through 3 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Amen. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that's lost. That's right. That's right. Okay. It's hid to them as lost. Nobody's going to be able to find salvation if you don't know how to tell them. That's right. right. Amen. We got to be full of the word of God. Yes. Amen. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that read of it. Okay, you gotta read something. Right. Amen. Okay, you gotta read something. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end, uh, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it sure it will surely come, it will not tarry. In other words, when you read. Hallelujah, then you need to meditate and you need to let God make sure he gives you the correct answer. Amen. That's right. Amen. You don't just read it like you do a magazine and get the thrilling part and you say, oh, wow, that was cool. That was, that was something else to know. Hallelujah. No, you want to read the word of God and you want to sit and think on the word of God. You want to put some prayer along with your reading because you want to fully understand what the word of God says. Yes. Then you'll be able to run. Yeah. Then you'll be able to move. Oh, yeah. Then you won't hesitate when you question. Yeah. Then you won't run from the devil. You run to the devil. Guess what? God's about to bless me. Come on. Come on. I'm going to obey the word of God. God's about to bless me. Yeah. Glory to God. You know, I'll be glad when the church, you know, we stop running from the devil and get on the attack. Right. Woo. Yeah. We need to get in this mud shot and tell him what's about to happen. Yeah. Come on. Instead of waiting till he perfect you as a devil, says, oh God, what do I do now? Right. Get the word of God and tell the devil before it starts. Oh. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can tell this what's going to happen, devil. Right. We're going to have revival. We're going to have a move with the spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to prosper in his hands. Yeah. 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 Pray. Why do we have to wait to be attacked? Right. That's right. Woo. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, just sit around waiting on the devil to beat our brains out. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3, it says, Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. God wants to write that word on your heart. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He wants to, he, here's what he told Israel, let it be like frontless before your eyes. Yeah. You see enough of the word of God, hallelujah, and less of Google, hallelujah, you won't have no problem talking about the word of God when the trial comes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You'll be able to quote it rather than quote what the people on the, on, on the, on the videos are saying. Yeah. 
Yeah. Haven't you recognized? That's what rap music and all this stuff is all about. Right. Yeah. I remember a man explaining that some years ago. Glory to God. Whenever, like I'm talking right now, some of y'all not gonna remember what I said. Okay? But if I was to sing what I was telling you, you couldn't forget. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? When something goes into your mind that you hear in your ear, when it goes in your mind, your conscience will take it and examine it and decide, do we store this or do we kick it out? <laughs> That's how the human mind works. Right. It's made like that. Right. But when you hear something to music, it bypasses the conscience and goes straight to memory. That's right. Woo. And you can't help but remember. That's right. That's why all you can say is ABCs. Amen. They put it in a jingle when you was in school. That's right. And anything yeah. else that they want you to remember, they put it in a jingle. And so when you, whenever you can't, God know when I can't remember what letter come behind it, I start singing the ABC song. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna tell y'all that. That's good. We all do that. Still works. If I ain't quite sure which one come out the other one, I just sing the ABC song. It works. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> and then I know what to write down. Yeah. Because it's going to go straight past. Hallelujah. And go straight into memory. That's and good. so that's why all the commercials have music. That's right. That's why anything that they want to sell an idea to your head for you to do it, they put music on it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and then and, and then they'll, they'll, they'll close out. Now they'll, they'll put, like for instance, when they're selling cars, okay, when they're selling cars, they'll play music and they stand a half dressed woman in front of the car. Right? Come on. Yeah. Okay? That way you can't forget the car because you stare at it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just being too honest, right? Woo. No, but that's how that's how marketing works. They know what will cause you to remember something. Yeah. And that's what the world does. That, that is the synagogue of Satan's plans. Okay? Yeah. That's, that's how he wants you to do Because if we live that way and we'll take all our examples that way, then he can get all his mess put out in the world and then it, get it you in a place where you can't forget it. Right. right. And so it comes to your mind foremost instead of the things of God. Right. And so you got to give your mind a bath with the word of God. Amen. Get a mind bath. Get in there and read some scriptures. Yeah. Hallelujah. To wash all that mess out of your mind. Yeah. yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how you're going to grow up a strong young person. That's how you're going to grow up a strong Christian. Amen. Glory to God. You know, uh, age ain't the only thing make you a youth. You can be a youth when you knew to God. That's right. Amen. Okay, and so you got to leave off from youthful lust. That's the right. Bible says. The only way to do that is get full of the word of God. Yeah. Right. Amen. You got to get full of the word of God. Yeah. All right. So 2 Timothy 3, chapter, um, 2 Timothy 3, chapter 1 says, This know also at the last... Days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful and unholy. Yeah. Okay? And so, but the Bible tells us to obey your parents. Amen. Your parents are supposed to tell you how long to stay out. Come on. That's right. Your parents are supposed to tell you when you, you don't be here by then, you better call me. Yeah. They're supposed to know where you're at because they're responsible to God. Right. And you're responsible to them. Yes. Okay? God does everything and always have in a hierarchy. Yes, he has. Yes. Okay? Yeah. He will speak to a man and then he speak to his family or he speak to a woman and she's the only one that's over the family. Hallelujah. And then they're supposed to be admonished. Okay? So when they're telling you what to do and when they're setting goals for you, you're supposed to pay attention to that. Yes. Man. Yes. Okay. Unless their minds is corrupt. Right. If they're getting out of the word of God, then, then you need to pray for them. Right. You need to pray for them. But that's how God wants us to do. Amen. He don't want you being disobedient to your parents. Your parents know some stuff you don't know. Yeah. Right. Amen. All right. Amen. Okay, so then they get without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incognite, fierce, despisers of those that are good. That's how you know when you're going the wrong way. When you start despising other people that are living right. Right. 
You know, we, we, you know, we, when somebody's trying to do right, you, oh, I don't take all that. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you're going the wrong direction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're going the wrong direction. Your conscience is getting seared. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Your Come conscience on. is getting seared. Yep. Okay. And so you, you want to make sure that you keep a good conscience before the Lord. Because then after that, you end up being traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Hallelujah. The Bible says, from such, turn away. Yeah. Okay. Right. What's the power? I always like asking people this. He said, denying the power thereof. What's the power in God? What's the real power in God in your life? Okay. That's how it activates. But what's the real power? You know, you, what, what power are you denying? See? The power to change. The real power in God is to change you. That's what the Holy Ghost does. That's what the blood is for. That's what baptism is for. It's to change you. Amen. And so whenever you go to be living a victorious life before God and you don't change, yes. yeah. then God ain't really got a hold on you. That's right. right. That's true. You ain't really living for God. You still living for you. That's true. Oh, That's and true. the longer you live for God, the more and more change should happen. Yes. That's right. That's right. You start off not doing a little bit. The things that you used to do and then it's supposed to get better and yeah. better and better as you walk with God. Yes. Yes. I'm looking at the churches now, hallelujah, you go in there and people get a conviction. Then you come back five years later and those convictions is gone. Jeez. They, they wear a dress down to their ankles and then they go back up to their knees after they've been living for God for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, that's going backwards. Yes. It's going backwards. I never got nowhere when I was going backwards. Nope. Right, right, right. <laughs> Never got nowhere when I was going backwards. Yeah. You got to keep going forward. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Glory to God. Praise God. And so, this is what happens. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lust. Right. Okay. And so, this is the reasons they lead them away. Because they're led away of divers lust. The word silly means little or foolish. Mm. Okay? Little or foolish. Right. Okay? That's the type of people that get led away. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? So, forever Googling and not finding the truth. Mm. That's what I say. <laughs> forever looking for stuff, hallelujah, looking up stuff and not finding the truth. Amen. Okay? The truth is in the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Right? Okay? Google's full of words and ideas and facts. Hallelujah. But it's got to be put together. Amen. Okay? And that's what the Bible does. It reveals to you how God intends it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. So this great leader, the one that put Pilate, I mean, excuse me, Pilate, the one that put Jesus on the cross. Okay? This, this, I'm just reading this for understanding. Okay? Pilate therefore said to him, Art thou a king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hear my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? Mm -hmm. Okay? And then when he had said this, you know, he, he sent him back out to the Jews and said, I find no fault in a man. Okay. But he was the fifth governor of the province of Judea. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he wasn't interested in what truth was. Okay. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Okay. But he wasn't interested in what truth was. He said, what is truth? And after he said, what is truth? Then he walked out. Mm -hmm. wow. He didn't yeah. stay there for Jesus to tell him what it meant. Yeah. Right. Okay? But he was a leader of a bunch of people. Amen. Okay? But he wasn't interested in the truth. He just interested in leadership. So he just hurry up and made a decision. That's why he crucified Jesus. Jeez. Hey, we got to want to know. That's right. We got to want to know. Yes. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. I'm going to go quickly here. I'm going to give you some keys here. Okay, one of them, we must exhort. Okay, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. 
says, take heed, brother, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. And so every day you should be exhorting the word of God. Amen. You should be sharing the word of God. And we need to be sharing the word of God one to another. Amen. That's what I love about being in this church. Every time you call somebody, you want to talk to somebody, they want to talk about the word of God. Amen. They want to talk about the spirit of God. That's exhorting. Right. Okay. That's what's encouraging. That's why you need to have friends that's in the church. Amen. Okay. You want to have fellowship with people that's in the church because they're going to keep your mind on the things of the church. Amen. 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 All right. Walking after the Spirit, Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, it, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit... Uh, the things of the spirit. Now remember it said, don't neglect the gift that's in you. So make sure that you're walking after the Holy Ghost. Yes. Make sure that you're spending time praying yourself into the Holy Ghost. Right. Make sure you're talking to other people that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let the spirit guide you. Because if not, then if you do, then you'll stay away from the deeds of the flesh. Right. That's how you keep the flesh down. Keep the spirit high and alive. Right. Okay. That will strengthen you. That will cause you to not be a weak saint, a weak lamb that the devil can come and pick you off. Mm. Another one is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. And as though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and through, though I have faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Right. It goes down to verse 8. It says, charity, the charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So one of the ways you know that the Spirit of God is in control of your life is when you have love. One to another. When you have love, even for the sinners. When you have love for those who come against you and persecute you. Amen. The devil don't want you to have love. Because right. you have love. Love is of God. Right. And if you love somebody that's having a hard time with their life, or love somebody that's giving you a hard time with your life, hallelujah, then you're exhorting and you're showing the spirit of God. Yes. And that's going to make them want God. Amen. That's going to cause God, hallelujah, to step in and stop them from persecuting you. Right. Amen. Glory to God. So that's, that's a weapon that can help make you strong. Okay. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Right. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Yes. Here's what James said about it. Chapter 2, verse 17 says, Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Right. Yeah, man, say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Okay? And so, Believest thou that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Amen. Okay, And so believe in that one God. Amen. If you believe in that one God, you got the devil under control. Yes. Amen. He knows the one God that you serve. Right. And so when you hear from him, when you hear from his representative, mention Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. When you start talking about Jesus, hallelujah, all that stuff will cut off. Right. When people start wanting to talk about stuff that don't make no sense, start talking about Jesus. Amen. I guarantee you they'll either listen up or shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory right. to God. That's right. Amen. All right. Some other ways to have victory. Set yourself, seek God, and ask for help. Recognize the greatness of God. Remind him of his word and be humble before him. Okay, when you pray, remind him of his word. Yes. Yeah. Your word says I was going to be blessed. Your word says I will be strong. Right. Your word says I will do exploits. Amen. Okay, Remind him of his word. Yes. Okay, When you have a problem, turn the problem over to God. Right. 
Pastor Tremell, when you have problems, turn the problem over to God. Yeah, yeah, right. Glory to God. I'm preaching to me. I'm here. Yeah, man. Okay, we got to turn the problems over to God. Yeah. Okay, get God's word in the situation. Right. Go and find out what the word says about that particular situation. Yeah, yeah. Find out what the word recommends for you to do in that particular situation. Right. Hallelujah. Because your faith and your strength is going to come in what God's word says. Yeah. Right. Okay. And if God knows he trusts you trust his word, then he knows that you trust him. Amen. Amen. Right. That's right. He's more likely, hallelujah, to hurry up and answer your cry when you're quoting the word of God. Amen. Amen. He knows what you're standing on. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise and worship him for the answer. Amen. Not after you get it. Right. Before you get it. Right. When they came and stole everything, hallelujah, and all the men was mad at David, and they prayed, and they cried until they couldn't cry no more. Yes. I can only imagine that. Just running out of tears. Okay. And so they ran out of tears, and David said, enough crying. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He went and got, he said, bring me the ephod. No, he went and got his praise outfit on. Yeah. After he got his praise out, outfit on, he went and went after God, saying, can I pursue? Amen. Yeah. The Lord said, yeah, you can pursue, and you're going to get everything back. Yeah. Why? Because he praised him first. Yeah. Yes, he did. He believed him and from, straight from the beginning that's right. that he was going to be victorious. That's right. And that's the way we have to go after God. That's what's going to make us strong. Yeah. That's what's going to make you strong. You young people, when you want something from God, after you ask them, start praising God. Praise yeah. Hallelujah. You probably got more energy in your body than I do. Go ahead and give God your best praise and watch how God will react to it. That's right. He's going to give you the victory. He's going to show you what to do with your life. That's right. He's going to stop the persecutors from persecuting you. He's going to give you strength. Hallelujah. When somebody's giving you a hard time. Yeah. Hallelujah. So when you ask God, start worshiping. Start praising. Start believing God. Yeah. That your works, hallelujah, show your faith. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it's time for the church to rise up. Please stay. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got to get this, this Andrew location here. Yes, right. Amen. The young people in this place are under attack. Amen. Right. The devil wanted to destroy their lives before they even get started. Yeah, that's right. And so those of us say, we got to be witness. Thank you, Sister um, Sister Rebecca. Come ahead. <laughs> Thank you for bringing somebody to church. Yeah, amen. Uh, he, wasn't came, he wasn't telling me what God was doing. That's, that's what right. we got to do. Hallelujah. Right. Brother, when you go back to church, tell them what's going on in church. Amen. Yeah. You know, they don't want to talk about everything else, but tell them what's going on in church. Amen. Amen. Right. Glory to God. We're glad you're here. We're thankful. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's going to help you be a strong youth. Yeah. Yeah. We need strong youth. Y'all got an inheritance coming. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. Let's yeah. worship with the singers. Hallelujah. As they begin to minister in song. Now, if anybody want to get something from God, the altar is open. God wants to touch some souls today. God's going to give us fresh strength today. That's right. God's going to put power in our witness today. Yeah. Glory to God. I want to be a living epistle yeah. known and read of all men. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Make me in your image. Wash me white as snow. Purify this heart of mine. Lord, I give Reach for strength today. Say, Lord, help me today. The strength is in the Holy Ghost. Get more and more and more the Holy Ghost. If you never had the Holy Ghost, lift your hands up and say, God, I want the Holy Ghost. The only requirement is repentance. You empty yourself out, God will fill you with Him. Make me in your image. Make me more like you. 